This video is sponsored by P0 Security. More about P0 Security later in the video. Identity and access management is the most critical and complex component that governs the authentication and authorization of every resource within a cloud environment. So the importance of securing identities, especially within cloud environments, cannot be overstated as recent statistics reveal the magnitude of identity misconfigurations and compromise in recent times. According to a recent report from Palo Alto, nearly 99% of IAM policies are overly permissive. We'll go over what an IAM policy is later in the video. However, in this report, Palo Alto's Unit 42 third researchers analyzed over 680,000 identities across 18,000 cloud accounts and over 200 different organizations to understand their configurations and usage patterns. The research revealed that nearly all cloud identities are overly permissive and many grant permissions that are never used. Additionally, 53% of cloud accounts allow for weak password usage and 44% allow password reuse. Unfortunately, malicious adversaries appear to know this and use this as a means to compromise various cloud environments. But first and foremost, if you're new here, my name is Day and I'm a security engineer at Datadog. If you're interested in cybersecurity or cloud security, you've definitely come to the right place. In today's video, we'll be diving into the world of IAM, identity and access management in the cloud. IAM plays a crucial role in ensuring the security and control of resources within a cloud environment. As a matter of fact, identity is now defined by many as the new perimeter in cybersecurity. At its very core, IAM revolves around two fundamental pieces, the entity, and its permissions. Entities represent individuals, roles, groups, or even services with access to your cloud resources. This could be a user like you or me, or even an IAM role. An IAM role allows access to resources and services without the need to use long-term access keys or shared credentials. Secondly, the permissions define who has access to what, when, and where. And here's an example of what an IAM policy looks like within AWS. Starting with the who. In IAM policies, the who is represented by the identity, principle, or role that the policy applies to. In this case, the who is not explicitly defined in the policy itself. Instead, the policy should be attached to a specific IAM user or role within AWS. Next, the what is defined by the actions specified in the policies action field. In this case, it allows an action related to the Amazon Simple Storage Service, also known as Amazon S3, specifically the S3 get object action, which means that the actions allow for the retrieval of objects in an S3 bucket within AWS. The when is defined by the conditions specified in the policy. In this case, the condition date less than restricts access to a specific time frame allowing access until December 31st, 2023. This is an example of a time-based access control. Finally, the where is also defined by the conditions specified in the policy. In this statement, the condition IP address is used to restrict access based on the source IP address. So in summary, the who is defined by the IM users or roles to whom this policy is attached. The what is shown by access to specific AWS actions related to S3. The when shows that access is allowed until December 31st, 2023. And finally, the where shows that access is allowed only from specific IP address ranges. In order to further understand identity and access management, there are three core concepts you must know. Authentication, authorization, and auditing. Authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user or entity attempting to access a resource or system and it ensures that the user or entity is who they claim to be. Authorization controls what actions or resources authenticated users or entities are allowed to access and this defines the permissions and privileges granted to the individuals or systems based on their identity and role within the organization. Finally, Auditing is essential for monitoring and tracking access to resources and systems. This ensures that actions taken by users and systems are logged and can be reviewed for security compliance and troubleshooting purposes. Organizations with effective IAM strategies and implementations 
address these three pillars comprehensively to maintain a secure and well-managed environment while providing users and systems with appropriate access to their cloud resources. Now that we understand the basics, we know why IAM is so crucial in cloud security. Your data and applications are distributed across servers and data centers worldwide. Without proper IAM controls, you risk unauthorized access, data leaks, and security breaches. And this is where the sponsor for today's video, P0 Security, comes in. P0 Security specializes in access visibility and privileged access for cloud native environments. With P0 Security, you can perform IAM audits within your cloud environment, identify who has access to your resources, detect ghost accounts, and identify risks within your cloud environment. P0 Security's tool also provides insight into your cloud environment, including the biggest risks, users with privileged access, and the ability to revoke privileged access when necessary. It helps you identify what needs to be audited and allows you to control requests for privilege access management via Slack. The best part is that you can use the link in the description to sign up for P0 Security for free and explore the powerful IAM and privilege access management capabilities. So be sure to check them out and ensure that the IAM configurations within your cloud environments are secure. Thanks to P0 Security for sponsoring this video. One of the core practices used in IAM is the principle of list privilege, which means granting users the minimum level of access required to perform their tasks. This reduces the risk of accidental or intentional data breaches. Additionally, it is crucial to regularly review and update your IAM policies as your organization's needs evolve. This ensures that only authorized individuals have access to your resources. IAM also plays a vital role in compliance. Many regulatory standards such as GDPR and HIPAA require organizations to implement strong access controls and maintain an audit trail of user activities. For those who are keen on delving deeper into learning more about IAM, I would highly encourage you to attempt creating your very own roles, users, permissions, and policies within your own test cloud environment. By immersing yourself with this hands-on experience, you will not only acquire a comprehensive understanding of the various intricacies of IAM, but you also develop a strong grasp of its different nuances and applications. IAM is very complex. However, this learning experience will help you understand how IAM works so that you can control and manage access to your cloud resources or your organization's cloud resources. You can try creating custom roles to define what each user can do in your cloud environment. And you can also set specific permissions to control which resources each user can access. The significance of IAM in cloud security cannot be overstated. In a distributed cloud environment where data and applications are stored across multiple servers and data centers, the absence of robust IAM controls can leave you vulnerable to unauthorized access and possible data breaches. And this is exactly why cloud security roles have recently been in high demand. So if you want to learn more about how to get into cloud security, then check out any of these videos that I've made to help you get started on that path. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.